These words are spoken from the book Waking Up by Sam Harris. There is nothing passive about mindfulness. One might even say it expresses a specific kind of passion, a passion for discerning what is subjectively real in every moment. It is a mode of cognition that, above all, undistracted, accepting, and ultimately non-conceptual. Being mindful is not a matter of thinking more clearly about experience. It is the act of experiencing more clearly, including the arising of thoughts themselves. Mindfulness is a vivid awareness of whatever is appearing in one's mind or body, thoughts, sensations, moods, without grasping at the pleasant or recoiling from the unpleasant. One of the great strengths of this technique of meditation, from a secular point of view, is that it does not require us to adopt any cultural affections or unjustified beliefs. It simply demands that we pay close attention to the flow of experience in each moment. The principal enemy of mindfulness or of any meditative practice is our deeply conditioned habit of being distracted by thoughts. The problem is not thoughts themselves, but the state of thinking without knowing that we are thinking. In fact, thoughts of all kinds can be perfectly good objects of mindfulness. In the early stages of one's practice, however, the arising of thought will be more or less synonymous with distraction, that is, with a failure to meditate. Most people who believe they are meditating are merely thinking with their eyes closed. By practicing mindfulness, however, one can awaken from the dream of discursive thought and begin to see, with each arising image, idea, or bit of language, vanish without a trace. What remains is consciousness itself, with its attending sights, sounds, sensations, and thoughts appearing and changing in every moment. In the beginning of one's meditation practice, the difference between ordinary experience and what one comes to consider mindfulness is not very clear, and it takes some training to distinguish between being lost in thoughts and seeing thoughts for what they are. In this sense, learning to meditate is just like acquiring any other skill. It takes many thousands of repetitions to throw a good jab or coax music from the strings of a guitar. With practice, mindfulness becomes a well-formed habit of attention, and the difference between it and ordinary thinking will become increasingly clear. Eventually, it begins to seem as if you are repeatedly awakening from a dream to find yourself safely in bed. No matter how terrible the dream, the relief is instantaneous. And yet it is difficult to stay awake for more than a few seconds at a time. My friend Joseph Goldstein, one of the finest Visapana teachers I know, likens the shift in awareness to the experience of being fully immersed in a film and then suddenly realising you are sitting in a theatre watching a mere play of light on a wall. Your perception is unchanged, but the spell is broken. Most of us spend every waking moment lost in the movie of our lives until we see that an alternative to this enchantment as exists. We are entirely at the mercy of appearances. Again, the difference I am describing is not a matter of achieving a new conceptual understanding or of adopting new beliefs about the nature of reality. The change comes when we experience the present moment prior to the arising of thought. I'll say that again. The change comes when we experience the present moment prior to the arising of thought. The Buddha taught mindfulness as the appropriate response to the truth of dukkha, usually translated from the Pali somewhat misleadingly as suffering. A better translation would be unsatisfactoriness. Suffering may not be inherent in life, but unsatisfactoriness is. We crave lasting happiness in the midst of change. Our bodies age, cherished objects break, pleasures fade, 
relationships fail. Our attachment to the good things in life, our attachment to the good things in life, and our aversion to the bad amount to a denial of those realities. I'm going to say that again. Our attachment to the good things in life and our aversion to the bad amount to a denial of these realities and this inevitably leads to feelings of dissatisfaction. Mindfulness is a technique for achieving equanimity amid the flux, allowing us to simply be aware of the quality of experience in each moment, whether pleasant or un unpleasant. This may seem like a recipe for apathy, but it needn't be. It is actually possible to be mindful and therefore to be at peace with the present moment, even while working to change the world for the better. Mindfulness meditation is extraordinarily simple to describe, but it isn't easy to perform. True mastery might require special talent and a lifetime of devotion to the task, and yet a genuine transformation in one's life's perception of the world is within reach for most of us. Practice is the only thing that will lead to success. The simple instructions given in the box that follows are analogous to instructions on how to walk a tightrope, which I assume must go something like this. 1. Find a horizontal cable that can support your weight. 2. Stand on one end. 3. Step forward by placing one foot directly in front of the other. 4. Repeat. 5. Don't fall. Clearly, steps two to five entail a little trial and error. Happily, the benefits of training and meditation arrive long before mastery does. And falling, for our purposes, occurs almost ceaselessly every time we become lost in thought. Again, the problem is not thoughts themselves, but the state of thinking, without being fully aware that we are thinking. As every meditator soon discovers, distraction is the normal condition of our minds. Most of us topple from the wire every second, whether gliding happily into reverie or plunging into fear, anger, self-hatred and other negative states of mind. Meditation is a technique for waking up. The goal is to come out of the trance of discursive thinking and to stop reflexively grasping at the pleasant and recalling from the unpleasant so that we can enjoy a mind, undisturbed by worry, merely open like a sky, and ever so little... <laughs> I'm going to say that again, it's so beautiful. The goal is to come out of the trance of discursive thinking and to stop reflexively grasping at the pleasant and recoiling from the unpleasant, so that we can enjoy a mind, undisturbed by worry, merely open like a sky, and effortlessly aware of the flow of experience in the present. Wow. So the box titled How to Meditate. Number one, sit comfortably with your spine erect, either in a chair or cross-legged on a cushion. Two, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and feel the points of contact between your point and the chair or the floor. Notice the sensations associated with the sitting, feeling of pressure, warmth, tingling, vibration, etc. Three, gradually become aware of the process of breathing. Pay attention to wherever you feel the breath most distinctly, either at your nostrils or in the rising and falling of your abdomen. Four, allow your attention to rest in the mere sensation of breathing. You don't have to control your breath. Just let it come and go naturally. 5. Every time your mind wanders in thought, gently return it to the breath. 6. As you focus on the process of breathing, you will also perceive sounds, bodily sensations or emotions. Simply observe these phenomena as they appear in consciousness and then return to the breath. 7. The moment you notice you have been lost in thought, Observe the present thought itself as an object of consciousness. Then return your attention to the breath or any sounds or sensations arising in the next moment. 8. Continue in this way until you can merely witness all objects of consciousness, sights, sounds, 
sensations, emotions, even thoughts themselves as they arise change and pass away. Those that are new to this practice generally find it useful to hear instructions of this kind spoken aloud during the course of a meditation session. I have posted guided meditations of varying length on my website. These words are spoken from the book Waking Up by Sam Harris. He's one of my favourite um, favorite authors and philosophers and podcasters. Um, it's called Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion. And I read from pages... Yeah, I read from page 36 to page 40. So again, that's uh, Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion by Sam Harris. And if you enjoy this, I'll read some more excerpts from this book and maybe other mindfulness and meditation books. Um, I've been meditating now for uh, every day, almost every day for at least a year. Uh, I've done over 600 meditations altogether and I've meditated for around, see each meditation is at least 10 minutes, so yeah, 6,000 minutes. Yeah, um, it's quite a lot of meditation time. And that is my friend Ty Streetman who's just arrived and we're going to be editing photos for his Aquatic Habitats book. Take care. Cheerio.